there's lots of ways of looking at results in ICM. In this video, I'm going to show you some of my favourites. I'm going to go through looking at the log files, replay results, the graphing tools, saving workspaces, using result lines, and then looking at flood sections. You right click on the result object, open as log results. The information in the log tells you the version that you used. It provides all the details of the model. It also tells you about the computer that the model was run on. Uh, and one thing I really like to have a look at is the volumes and also the rainfall. So it's a good check to have a look at the rainfall volume and the IFDs that you've used with the area or the catchment that you've got and make sure that that lines up. Uh, and the other thing you might be interested in, there's the mass error report, but also the runtime. So you can see that this particular model on my machine took just over a minute to run. That one. Uh, the next one we're going to have a look at is the replay results. So to do that, we can just drag the result object into the GeoPlan. When we do that, we'll notice that we've got two new toolbars. We've got the replay results and the analysis tools. We've also got the time bar up here on the top left hand corner. So to have a look at the results, I'm first going to drag on a theme for the depth and velocity. And then I'm just going to turn on the maximum. So this is the worst simulation results for each element across the whole 90 minutes. You can see that there's two clear overland flow paths through the model. And I'm just going to zoom into the southern flow path. To get a clearer view of what's going on, I'm just going to uncheck the display for the ground model. And now we can see the overland flow path running off this car park, over the road, and through some of the properties to the river. If I took a, take a look at my key and expand the velocity theme, I can see that the red arrows that we can see just down here indicate a velocity greater than 2 metres a second. So I can actually plot that in a graph by using the graphing tool and I just click in the area. And if I hit the control key, I can actually graph the depth and the speed at the same time. And we can see at the peak of the velocity we have just over two to two and a half meters a second. So we can turn on the trace there by right clicking and clicking auto trace. And if we go back to the start of the simulation, we'll see the red bar, which is the time. And if I just go to the peak there, we will see that the velocity is about 2.2 uh, meters per second with a depth of just under 200 meters, uh, 200 mils. So if we go to Windows, we can tile that vertically and then we can have a look at the simulation in plan view and the graph at the same time. If we play that, we can watch the red velocities on the map at the same time as the graph. If this layout view with this kind of graph, with this plan view, is something that you'd like to keep to look at for a later date, or maybe you want to send to a team member to have a look at, we can save that in a workspace. So under the master database, right click on the Storm tutorial and go to new and workspace. Give it a name. What we can do there is if we close all the tabs, we can then double click on the workspace and we'll be looking exactly where we were before we closed anything. Next, we're going to have a look at flows across roads and through overland flow paths. First, we're going to have a look at what the name of this road is. So we're going to right click, view online, Google Maps. And we can see that because we're using the right projection, this has brought up the right location in Google Maps. And we're looking at the intersection of Burnville Crescent. To create a flow line, we go to 
line and then just draw a line through the section that we want. I'm going to give it the name Burnville Crescent and use the result section type. To look at the results we simply use the graphing tool and then we can select flow through the line. If I hover over the top there we can see that there's a maximum flow of about 1.2 QMAX. If we think we might need to look at results at that location again we'll want to save the results section. To do that we just right click on the storm tutorial and go to new results analysis and then we just give it the name to correlate to that section. The last result tool we're going to look at is the flood section tool. If I pan across to where the overland flow path gets deep at the downstream end, we can draw a section through the flow path. And if I just go back to the start of the simulation when the model is dry, what we're looking at here is the green line which is the ground terrain and the orange line which is the mesh interpretation of that ground surface. This is a really good section to have a look at if you want to make sure that the ground is um, being represented correctly by the mesh. In this case it's quite a good representation. When we turn on the maximum flow we can see the water elevations in that section.